The Four Stages of Backsliding 1 Corinthians 10, 12 Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Any time the issue of backsliding is discussed, the image that comes to the minds of many people is the noticeable fall of a believer into a gross sin. People tend to think backsliding is a believer falling into sin like adultery or idolatry. People tend to view backsliding as if it is a sudden event that happened overnight. But this notion is not always true about backsliding. Backsliding is not an instantaneous action. It takes stages and processes. There is no doubt that backsliding doesn't happen in a day. It is a gradual process that evolves over time. Bit by bit, you move further and further away from the point you were. The Bible hints that anyone who presumes that he or she stands should take heed, otherwise there would be a fall. When we throw caution to the wind, we begin to decline. The day you stop growing in the things of God is the day you begin to retrogress spiritually. The actual fall of a believer is only a reflection of a long-term process that suddenly becomes visible to all. Before a believer is seen to display signs of backsliding, publicly or openly, he or she must have started falling from the faith in several different areas privately. If we are watchful enough, we should be alerted by the Holy Spirit when our spiritual candlesticks are under threat of removal from its position. We would discern when we begin to lose our first love for Christ. Once we continue to consistently ignore this inner warning from the Holy Spirit is when we start to free fall into sin. Examine yourself whether you are already slipping from faith and let this message reconcile you to God before you get lost completely. God loves you and He wants you to finish strong. Here are the stages of backsliding. Stage 1. Self-Confidence Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You were not saved by your own personal effort, but by the finished work of Christ. Therefore, the beginning and the continuation of our walk with God must be sustained by God. Self-confidence is one of the first stages of a drifting believer. I know how to handle situations alone. I cannot fall. I have the ability. Are all signs of self-confidence, also known as pride. When you start believing that everything good in your life is of your own doing, you have started to backslide. Believing that you can rely on your own strength instead of that of God will cause you to push God away. The more you rely and trust in yourself, the more you push away the Spirit of God until one day you realize that you are now on your own. God no longer resides on the throne of your heart. We are to be completely dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be completely reliant on the Lord God Almighty. We are to trust in the Lord with all our heart and never lean on our own understanding. As far as our spiritual walk is concerned, no one can run the race successfully on his or her strength. Jesus told Peter that the enemy was ready to sift him, but that he had prayed for him. Peter wouldn't have made it by his own strength. It is when the strength of God complements our weaknesses that we become strong. Anyone who does not take heed will fall. When a believer begins to boast in his or her strength, 
he or she is already setting themselves up for danger. God is the source of our strength. Therefore, we must not lean on our own understanding. The Bible establishes that the arm of flesh will fail us, and that by strength shall no man prevail. Pride will cause you to fall. Just look at the devil. Stage 2 is linked to stage 1, and that is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness is rooted in many things, and one of which is self-confidence and self-reliance. The more you realize how desperately we are in need of God's hand on our life, the more we will pray. To pray to God is to humble yourself. It is to acknowledge God and His Lordship over your life. It is to acknowledge that I need you, Lord Jesus Christ. A believer with a burning prayer life will not backslide. That is a fact. They will have a stronger and closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, their walk with God is a much straighter path. But when a believer becomes reluctant to pray, his or her spiritual fire will begin to burn low, and the devil can begin to introduce the things of this world to him or her. Their walk with God may start to include diversions until they are completely lost. Jesus told a parable in Luke 18 that pointed to the fact that we ought to pray always and not to faint. Prayerlessness is equal to powerlessness. If you cannot pray, your faith is prone to attack. You will soon discover that your passion for the things of God is gradually fading. When you don't pray, you will find that you begin to love the things of this world more than the things of God. You will begin to focus on the temporal things of this earth rather than eternal things. Your eyes will be on the here and now and not on heaven. Prayer is God's command to us as believers. We can't have an intimate relationship with God if we don't pray. Jesus made it a routine to always pray to his Father during his earthly ministry. Pray without ceasing is a command, not an option. Prayer indeed gives us access to the Father, and it keeps us connected to God. Stage 3. Keeping a great distance from the Lord. Luke 22:54. Then took they him and led him, and brought him unto the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. Peter had boasted he would go to prison and even die for Jesus. For him, it all started from self-confidence. But when he saw the way Jesus was being treated and talked about after being arrested, he went behind and followed from a distance. You see, when you are far from the Lord, you will forget the covenant and the promises you have made to serve him wholeheartedly, even like Peter. One of the things I strongly believe is that Peter wouldn't have denied Jesus if he was with him. Your close proximity with God will give you courage to withstand challenges. Your faith in him will cause you not to deny him in front of other men and women. But when you separate yourself and follow from a distance, you stand a higher risk of rejecting Christ. When you see yourself hiding the fact that you are a Christian to work colleagues and so-called friends, know that there is an issue. The world will always deny God, and when you find yourself doing the same, you have become of the world, which is enmity with God. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. You need to get to the point 
where your relationship with Jesus matters more than life itself. Where your relationship with Jesus matters more than people's opinions of you. If you deny Christ, Jesus will deny you. If you confess Christ, Christ will confess you for all eternity. Stage 4. Refusal to accept your wrong. Proverbs 29, 1. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Admitting you are wrong is the first step to salvation. Admitting you are wrong is the first step to salvation. Admitting you are not perfect is something you need to come to terms with. Admitting that there are still areas of your life that you need the Holy Spirit to work on is so important. This has caused a lot of people to fall from the faith. When they started falling into sin, God was merciful to send people to them to correct them and other warnings. But they turned deaf ears on the warnings of God until they fall out completely. A believer who is self-confident, weak in prayers, and also following the Lord from afar will most likely reject corrections. At each stage, the believer gets worse until he or she backslides. Where do you belong? Are you self-confident? Is your prayer life down the drain? Are you following the Lord afar off? What is your level of proximity with Him? Are you the type that refuses to accept you are wrong? You need to trace your steps back to the Lord and seek for mercy. The only way to be restored to the Lord is to confess and repent like Peter, who wept bitterly and sought for forgiveness from the Lord. The Lord will have mercy on you if you repent genuinely, and God will forgive. God is not a man. God is a forgiving God. Believe me, if He wasn't, you wouldn't be here right now. Ask for forgiveness.